Let us talk about an interesting device known as Faraday's disk. Now, what Faraday's disk actually is, right, we have a region of uniform magnetic field over here. And inside this region, we have a metal disk that is just spinning at some frequency f. Now, um, this is a very interesting one. So how we should think of Faraday's disk, I want you to think of this disk as being made up of a series of infinitely thin metal rods like this. See, and then they're just going like that, like that, like that, like that. So, so a lot of these tiny little metal rods make up this disk. Now, when you think of one rod, in one period, this rod is going to move around the entire area of this circle and cut this amount of area of magnetic field. And so, when you think about that, you can think of the average EMF induced over here, okay, as the uh, delta phi delta t, which is simply b dA dt. Right, again, n is 1, cosine theta is 1, okay, because you're perpendicular to the field. It's only one turn, if you like. And in the amount of area is simply pi r squared divided by the period, which turns out to be b pi r squared f. So this is how you calculate the EMF induced in Faraday's disk. And so what is really interesting about this is that if you consider any point on the uh, circumference of this disk, the EMF will be the same value. But if I look at somewhere else, let's say here, and all the other points that are equidistant from uh, the radius, okay, so this blue ring, the EMF will be some other value, but smaller than the EMF on the green line that I drew, right? Because the blue circle will have a smaller radius. And so the EMF is essentially zero at the middle, but as you move out like this, it increases in a concentric circle form. Okay, and so that's an interesting feature of Faraday's disk. Now let us consider how the current would flow. Now remember, according to Lenz's law, the current will simply oppose the motion. Now the disk is trying to rotate in this case in a clockwise manner, and so if you consider this line over here, the current has to induce a force that goes this way, or if you consider the line here, the current has to induce a force that goes this way. Basically, you are always trying to oppose the torque. And so using Fleming's left-hand rule, you can show that the current is indeed always trying to flow out from the center of the disk to the edges. And so the current flows out again, like a, almost like a water ripple from the center to the edges of the disk.